Hello, I'm Philip Stoughton for ID People. I'm here at ID World in Rio de Janeiro and I'm joined by Max Scheider. Max, always good to see you. Thanks very much for stopping by to chat. Um, national ID and the use of biometrics in national ID seems to vary enormously around the world. What We're here in South America, for example. What are you seeing here? We've heard a few presentations um, today. What are you seeing here compared to, say, Asia and Europe and the more developed regions? Well, um, I have not um, learned a lot about uh, biometrics for national ID in the South Americas yet. Mm. Uh, on, but there, there were a lot of presentations from, um, from Africa, some mm. African countries, but also from uh, Indonesia and India. And what you can see there, that, that, they, that they have gotten, got into a very strong business case for using biometrics, um, mainly for, uh, with the function of deduplication. So what they try to achieve is one person, one identity. Mm. That's the basic. And f f so the countries may have different business cases behind this, but one person, one identity is, um, is, 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 is the strong driver behind it. And what you see is that those countries are, are taking ten prints, they're taking two irises and the face to have a complete biometric record of any mm. um, citizen. And then they use this in the database to, to find potential duplicates. Then, on top of that, once you have built that, we also see for in these countries they are using this database for uh, supporting all kinds of, of electronic services, um, commercial services for, uh, in banking, um, but also services for governments. And then they use the, sa the same biometric, mainly fingerprint, to do a central verification. Right. And that's very interesting because that's a, f a service which you can distribute all over the country and which can easily support um, a, a whole variety of processes. Mm. And um, I think that is really, really interesting to yeah, learn. Yeah, and it's interesting yeah. to see. I, I'm fascinated by the different ways people move and there have been people sitting in that seat that have talked about uh, identity systems in their country where they've got over a, a, a billion citizens so you've got you know India at one end of the scale and then you've got really fascinating countries like Estonia that seems mm. to be really mm. pushing forward but has 1.5 million completely different scale so there are very very different demands and very very different approaches from government yes absolutely and even if you take Estonia Estonia is in Europe uh, uh, even in Europe Estonia has a kind of special place mm. uh, uh, I'm some people say, yeah, Estonia is a very small country, so uh, it's an easy job. I don't believe it. Um, that, that's the reason why they are kind of advanced. Uh, they have the same idea of uh, developing a government ID supported mm. surface infrastructure. Yeah, it's that holy government thing. Exactly. It's all smart government. That's smart that's government. Through. And they, they took the case from the beginning to the end as a complete business case. And that's the key. And I think this is also, for me personally, but maybe for other people uh, uh, from, from Europe uh, also, the, 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 the key message from the, the, the Far East, east uh, mm. countries and African countries, which we just discussed, um, that um, you should not um, just look at one small element of the ID identity chain, but that's exactly mm. what we did with the passport. Yeah, yeah. One has to be as holistic as possible. Yeah, exactly. Um, and you yeah. do see, as I say, as we mentioned, you do see these these variations. Um, I think with with Europe and perhaps with the US and, and a lot of places, we come to come to these things looking for a very specific solution, perhaps to a specific problem, which might be uh, immigration issues or, or different challenges. Whereas I think some of these new nations that have got quite a nice uh, kind of carte blanche approach yes. can come to it and say, okay, well, let's design a, an, an ecosystem that works. Yeah, yeah. Um, so do you think really they've, they've, they've learned lessons from us, but we need to learn some lessons from them in terms of how, how they apply that technology. They seem to be doing a good job of applying it in a, in a way that kind of benefits the citizens rather than, rather than trying to solve one specific problem. Yes, th I think that's the basic lesson we can learn. Um, but transferring this uh, or translating this message into 
a uh, case f uh, which uh, supports um, uh, European countries. I'm from Europe, mm. so I speak about European countries. Okay, there are uh, maybe I should even speak about European Union mm. countries um, because they are more regulated yeah. uh, from a central point. Um, it's not that easy to translate that that message and to put it into a uh, format which which so we can really benefit from uh, from what is happening there what we why we where we do benefit as an industry is that we are now being confronted with uh, a magnitude of um, uh, databases mm. which was unknown before yeah so um, industry and probably also the academic uh, society, they can mm. learn a lot about yeah. uh, about how bi biometri biometrics behaves on such a scale, and industry particularly, they can they can really improve their their products based yeah. on these scales. Yeah, based on those based on those structures. And um, we've got one more day to go of the of presentations here. Anything in particular that you're looking forward to tomorrow in terms of of topics and and. Uh, well, I, I must say, um, uh, almost all topics are extremely yeah. interesting. Yeah. I, you have to make choices. Uh, I will uh, certainly choose the um, uh, those uh, those sessions which are about large scale national mm. ID. Yeah. That is really my focus, and yeah. uh, I, I better stick to that. But there's enough. Yeah. Uh, certainly, the smart city stuff is interesting. Oh, the smart, yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Um, you know, th th this is also we we speak about national ID. But um, as a as a playing ground for mm. uh, for for large developments, but smart city yeah. is exactly yeah. uh, such a thing, but very different because it doesn't look so much into ID itself, mm. but it goes more into um, safety, for mm. example, surveillance, um, the use of the national ID, uh, a of a national ID infrastructure to um, uh, to better be able to identify people yeah, if and they support services yeah. and to yeah. support crime fighting and all yes those kind yes of things. yes yeah yeah uh, yeah I must say if, if my image of the smart city is uh, is al also one which uh, includes uh, smart surveillance yeah uh, because obviously that is one of the challenges you get yeah. when uh, when cities go are getting big and it's kind of it's that that classic challenge of these citizen ID systems as well, where you where you've got to play the um, the security role against the against the you know the services and the data, and and again that's yeah. the difference between Europe and I think other places because yeah. we tend to get quite hung up on the privacy thing and come at it from that angle, whereas quite often in Africa and these developing countries yeah. they're focusing on the services and the benefits. Yes. So yeah. The approach can yeah. be quite positive and negative, which is a, yeah. a challenge for the governments. Yeah. Well, I, I, I know that in India there are also many, many, many very uh, fierce discussions on, mm. on privacy and uh, how is the government going to use that database? Mm. Can they promise they don't then they don't use it on another way than it than they say? Yeah, or it doesn't fall into yeah you know the wrong hands. That's always the problem. That's always the problem. Uh, yeah, yeah. Well, it, but. Um, that is a cultural uh, uh, mm. issue. Yeah. Uh, it's impossible to to um, to say something about that. Uh, I only can say in Europe, this seems to be a a, a kind of issue, mm. the privacy uh, yeah. pa a part of it. Uh, and if you listen to all those arguments, you you, you can understand this concern. Mm. Uh, uh, on the other hand, um, you cannot do nothing. No, it has to be balanced. And stand it? still. Yeah. I think there's now a kind of standstill in Europe. You see a lot of businesses going outside of Europe. Mm. Uh, yeah, because there's a bit of a stagnation. There is a kind of stagnation. So, yeah. so we we really need to um, to translate the lessons learned from those countries and, yeah. and, and see how it can serve our models yeah. Uh, yeah. of of national yeah. ID because yeah. there are some and elements in it which we absolutely can use yeah and how that supports our infrastructure and our services yeah yes and also keeping privacy in in mind in mind yeah. absolutely okay holistic approach required obviously absolutely enjoy tomorrow thanks for stopping by thank always you always good to see you max thank you thank